Because under the Constitution, President, uh, outgoing President Yami is still uh, the President of the Gambia. He is still commander in chief of the armed forces of the Gambia. He still can tell soldiers, go here, go there, do this and do that, in response to whatever they deem to be their security concerns. Uh, soldiers, like civilian personnel, are obliged to serve the state that pays them. Uh, but the executive changes. So they are not loyal to one executive. They are loyal to any executive uh, that had been put in place by the Constitution. So, uh, in short, at this moment, mm -hmm. the Constitution puts mm -hmm. outgoing President Jami in that place. Mm -hmm. So, people should not be worried when they see soldiers anywhere, mm -hmm. and they just see that mm -hmm. uh, they are under his command. Okay. But what is important mm -hmm. is his declaration. Uh, after saying, yes, I agree with the results as the verdict of the people and verdict of God, he came back and said, well, I will not accept the results. I reject it, and it is invalid and that we are going to have first elections. Uh, what uh, uh, President Alec Barrow had told the population, and what I will also tell the population, is that he has no constitutional mandate to invalidate the results of elections. Mm -hmm. It has happened to both before, some have accepted and rejected, but it's immaterial to the truth, because the truth is only the IEC declares the results of elections, one day, once they declare the results, that is what stands. Okay. You can only go to the Supreme Court and give evidence to ask them to look into the results and request from them uh, to, to, to invalidate it. Mm -hmm. uh, that uh, APRC, uh, any other party, has a mandate to do. Uh, if uh, you had put a contender and the contender actual loss and elections, you are mandated under the Constitution within 10 days to put your case before the Supreme Court for review. That is just for review. It does not automatically change. It means that the results as announced by the AIC stands. That is why President Elegbaro told the nation that he is still president-elect and at the expiration of the term of office of the president, that same day the Constitution says he should assume office. You mentioned, you his, mentioned the 10 days. Um, yes. We are meant to understand that outgoing president have sent a petition to the Supreme Court. Uh, does this fall on the 10 days? Well, we will not deal with that. Uh, you, the journalists, everybody should go to the Supreme Court to see whether any case is filed uh, there on election petitions and tell the nation when it is filed. We can speculate on that. Uh, as I said, many pronouncements can be made on the air. They are just information for us to collect but we must go and check and validate them. As I have emphasized, he has no right to say that the election results are now invalid. He has no such power. They are still valid. He has no power to say we are going to go to have fresh elections. We are not at this moment going to have fresh elections. It is not for him to say so. So what we now have is president-elect who will go to assume office on the day that his term of office expires. And we want those who are interested in that, who are in support of that, whether they voted for uh, President Elber or not, to focus on that and not to focus in, on any issue, quarreling there, uh, you know, what he's trying to do, he's trying to show too much power, uh, this one wants to upset our game, you know. Anybody who does that, you're showing your immaturity uh, because there is no need for reaction. You should focus on preparing yourself for the celebration uh, of ensuring that President Alec Barrow uh, takes over uh, office after President Jamis' office uh, expires. President Barrow's office is uh, starting January. Um, what will happen if the outgoing president said some questions still need to be answered before I leave office? Well, that's uh, left for him to, uh, to, to say. What we can say is that the Constitution says his term of office expires in five years, and that's in January. And it also says that when it expires, uh, the term of office of the incoming president starts. So on that day, if he insists on staying in power, it will be an unconstitutional government and he will be declared uh, a rebel government. And any force, uh, on that day, all civil servants, 
all military personnel will be required now to accept that uh, President-elect Barrow is the president of the Gambia and should work with him uh, as uh, the person who is authorized to manage the affairs of the state. And anybody who fails to do so will be a rebel and obviously that will create problems for the Gambia but we know that no rebel can ever uh, stay in office. Uh, the era of uh, coup d'etat and stay in office for indefinitely has actually passed. You can only create havoc, you can only make a state to be a failed state uh, like the Libyas, etc. I don't think uh, that is in the interest of the Gambia and the Gambian people. What is very clear now is that when uh, uh, outgoing President Jammeh decided to accept the results of the elections, the whole international community uh, jubilated, uh, nation jubilated, and uh, it is important that we recognize that Gambia entered the uh, history uh, of the world as one of the most democratic nations in the world. And since we are starting that way, that should have continued. An assumption of it will take place. And it means that then Gambians will be more capable of scrutinizing, criticizing, and restraining the Barrow administration. They will be able to demand from its ministers to come to the radio. If they say that anything is wrong, to point it out right there, and they will have to answer. Mm -hmm. It means that Gambians will now take charge of the Gambia. It means that the radio and television will be open to divergent views and dissenting opinion. So uh, every state in history is the beginning of a new phase that will enable you to build a better civilization, a better society. Uh, I hope uh, outgoing President Jammeh will not allow conflict to deprive Gambia of the historical advantage that we have gained. Many people are saying that uh, the CDS is loyal to the incoming government. Um, do you have the backing of the CDS, who is a very important man in this case? Well, I think it is important for Gambians to understand uh, the Constitution. The Constitution again says that President Jammeh must serve a term of five years. That will expire in January. He is the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Gambia. So all members of the Armed Forces at this moment will be under his command and they are loyal to the state. Uh, when he declared that he accepted the results, that is in good faith. It means that you have a transitional government. So a transitional government will be congratulated by the international community, congratulated by the outgoing government. What we expected, in fact, is that the Speaker of the National Assembly, the ministers, the Chief Justice, the high commands in the army, in the police, in the NIA, in the drug squad, all will say, yes, we are expecting an incoming administration, and when you are there, uh, we will work comfortably with you. Uh, that, that helps to declare good faith and help the transition to be smooth. I believe the CDS was moved by that spirit to say what he said, and we should not read too much into it. Okay. But what is important is to bear in mind mm. that when Barrow comes into office, mm. anybody who fail to accept his presidency would be an outlaw, and obviously you'll be treated like a rebel. Okay. Um, in five minutes, you tell us. Uh when your government comes to office, what's the number one priority for the Gambians? Well, when the president elects government come to office, for me, I'm a spokesperson as part of a coalition. Uh, essentially, uh, it is already agreed that priority will be given to the economy. And priority will be given to human rights. And that in terms of the economy, it must be balanced. If you look at now, the, uh, uh, the economy in terms of revenue and expenditure, uh, we have fiscal indiscipline in the sense that the nation is living on debt. You know that the domestic debt is 25.1 billion, the latest uh, information we had. And the external debt is more 
you look at the, the debts of the country now, combined together, is more than 56, uh, uh, more than 106, 7, 8 percent of GDP. So that is a crisis situation for that. Mm. Now, the incoming government must balance revenue and expenditure. First, it must do so through uh, fiscal discipline. It must make sure that you increase revenue, reduce expenditure. For example, in 2014, 115 million on national celebrations, 15, 150 million, 16 to, to 65 million. Those are the things you take out from the expenditure. So essentially also, with this goodwill, a lot of investments will, are likely to come into the country, generating more tax revenue, generating more revenue, and therefore, rather than a negative contraction of the economy, you'll have uh, the uh, stimulation of the economy, mm -hmm. you'll have more resources for education, etc. You'll have more capacity to generate employment, you'll have more capacity to help the farmers with seed, fertilizer, and other incentives. So that is one objective, mm -hmm. because you cannot take off a society and make a society poorer. The objective is to make it better and more prosperous mm -hmm. and whoever comes tomorrow can build on that. Second thing is to release all prisoners detention without trial, due processes, all that must must go. The radio, television must open up, all the media houses, non-government must be free to generate an in income built into the productive base of the economy. Mm -hmm. They will be open up to divergent views and uh, dissenting opinion. Okay. So we'll have a more open society. On a final message, uh, you tell us whether you'll have a word of advice to the coalition supporters, especially the incoming government, if you will have a word of advice. I have always said it. President Elagbaro has always said it. The whole coalition maintained it, that this is a coalition to have a third republic that will be founded on genuine democracy because it would have been brought about by the consent of the people through the ballot box. So when you have that start, you do not exclude anybody. It means that everybody is part of that new Gambia. One Gambia, one nation, one people. So we said that President Alec Barrow stood as an independent candidate so that there will be no party biases. There will be no ethno-linguistic or what people call tribal biases. There will be no uh, religious biases. Now we will have the Gambian person who understands that the national coffers, the budget, comes from their force and that it should be utilized to build hospitals owned by everybody etc uh, so that we understand that we the Gambian people want that person who will use our wealth to make us more prosperous mm -hmm. who will use the power of government to give us greater liberty that's all we want mm -hmm. you know uh, liberty and prosperity does not have any color of any sort mm -hmm. uh, and all of us must own it so we are telling our supporters don't go and attack people mm -hmm. or make them even hate change. We want them to love change because they know that they are going to benefit from it. Look at Ghana. Uh, Rollins was gone. His party was gone. Contest brought his party again. Uh, they lost elections. They won again. Now, recently, they have lost another election. So we want parties to come and go. But ultimately, the power of the people to determine their manner of government will stay. And with their majority, they will want no government that will not give them liberty, dignity, and prosperity. That is the only government they deserve, mm. and that is the only government that should exist. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Okay.